nursing.com and nursingstudentbooks.com. Today I just wanted to do a quick uh, review and talk about IVs. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about necessarily starting IVs, but I'm going to talk about uh, some of the mistakes and things that I see new nurses and nursing student makes and uh, <clears throat> how to avoid these and how to make uh, generally kind of starting IVs a little bit easier. So as you see here, we have a Gelco 22 gauge IV, okay? Um, and this is really just the catheter, IV catheter, of course. So most hospitals, every hospital I've been at uses Gelco. It's kind of the, uh, the go-to for IVs. And with the Gelco, they're all color-coded, okay? So on the packaging here, you see this blue color. That's also the color on the hub. So this is a 22 gauge. And then we have the 20 gauge, which is pink, pink here and pink here. And then we also have um, an 18 gauge. 18 is green and green here. There's multiple other sizes. It will just kind of depend on what your hospital orders and what they use most often. Um, the interesting thing about this, this is measured in gauge, of course. So the 18 is actually the biggest and 22 is actually smaller. So generally when I start an IV, I usually go for the 20 gauge. Um, I grab a couple 18s and I'll grab a couple 20, uh, sorry, I usually use 20 gauge. I'll grab a couple 18s and a couple 22s as well, but I usually start with 20. And for a lot of patients that will work. If your patient has deeper veins, um, 18 might be a good way to go. If they're a smaller and older patient, older woman with really tiny veins, 22 might be the way to go. Now, of course, there are 24, there are 14 and 16. A lot of times in the OR, they'll put the 14 and 16. If you need to get blood products, uh, you want to have at least a 20, okay, because they're much bigger. For albumin also, 20 is always best. So, when you get the IV, of course, it's packaged sterilely. Starting IVs is an aseptic technique, it's not necessarily sterile, but you do want to clean the patient off. Um, and then when you open this, it is sterile inside, but you're going to be just using your regular gloves and everything. So you just open it like this, and inside, of course, if I was doing this on a patient, I would have gloves on and everything. Inside, what we have here, um, so you have your, your hub here, the needle right here. And then this is where you hold and advance the actual um, catheter, okay? So you'll pop this off, and that is what protects the actual uh, needle and everything. So you can take that off, toss that aside, that's not needed. Now, of course, when you're actually starting the IV, you're going to want to do it with the uh, bevel up. Now that makes obvious sense, okay? If we're going into a patient, we need to have that sharp surface, as you can see it right there, to penetrate the skin and to advance it. Now the only thing we're using the needle for is to get into the skin. Um, on top of this needle, there's the catheter. That's what actually stays inside the patient, okay? So the needle, the sharp part of the needle there, is what we're using to actually penetrate the skin and get into the vein. Once we're in the vein, we advance this, if you can see that, we advance that catheter, and that catheter is what sits inside, and the needle actually comes out, of course, okay? So, bevel's going to be up, and we're going to insert um, at a slight angle into the vein, and as we do that, okay, so there's little grips here on either side. We're going to grab onto these grips just like this, and our finger is going to go on the sliding part here. You can see there's a little notch for your finger to sit. Okay, so your finger just sits just like that. You're going to puncture the skin, and what you'll see inside this area here is you'll actually see a little flashback of blood. So this is all hollow inside here. Once this tip, this needle, penetrates that, uh, that vein, it's going to allow blood to enter into this chamber here. Once that blood enters the chamber, it means that you, of course, are inside the vein. So once you're inside that vein, you'll slowly, you're going to hold the hub, or the not the hub, the this uh, extender piece right here, completely still, and you slowly push here and advance this into the vein. So what you can see there is that needle's not moving anymore and I'm slowly advancing that catheter into the vein, okay? 
So this really takes some finesse, some practice. It's not going to come immediately, um, but with practice you'll kind of get a feel for how to know when you're in a vein, how to know when you're in a good vein, or how to know when you maybe need to, to progress the, the needle a bit more past the valve or something. Okay, so you, you're holding this here, pushing it in, you get a little flashback, and you begin to advance this catheter. Okay, so the catheter will continue to advance as you continue to see flashback. This whole chamber here, if you have a really good stick, this is going to completely fill with blood. And this should advance easily if you have a good stick. Sometimes it's not going to advance really easily, but you may still be inside the vein. So you just advance this, and I want you to listen real closely. Because as you advance, you know when you've advanced all the way, because the needle will actually retract into here, and you're completely in. Okay, so you advance. You hear that little click? Once you've done that, you've retract that needle completely and I can't actually pull that back or, or anything anymore. Okay, so once you've done that, the first thing you want to do is you want to release that tourniquet off the patient, okay? If you don't do that, you're continuing to pull this blood. As soon as you disconnect this, you're going to have blood going everywhere. Let me just say that's the number one thing that I see nursing students and nurses, new nurses do um, wrong is they disconnect this while they still have the tourniquet on. If you do that, you're just going to get a whole bloody mess everywhere. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, release that tourniquet, and you can then hold pressure on the vein just above where you have it inserted. So this will all be under the skin, okay? This will all be, you know, inside right here. So that would maybe look like that. But the whole, you know, catheter obviously is going to be inside that vein. So you release the tourniquet, and you can kind of bend this up a little bit. What that does is it kinks that off. It's not going to, these are pretty durable. But you'll want to be careful, you know, not to obviously break it, but you can kink it up a little bit. And that's to keep the, the skin and everything clean once you take this off. So then you're going to have your J-loop and everything ready. Um, and as you do that, you just twist right here. Okay, that comes off. There's your needle. And so this is all garbage. This is all sitting in the vein here like this. So, of course, what we need to do then is we need to connect our pigtail or J-loop, whatever you call it. Um, so I usually bend it up a little bit like that to stop the blood from just squirting out everywhere. And depending on how good your IV is, um, and how good of a stick you get, it'll determine kind of how much blood starts coming out. So just bend this up, and you'll kind of connect. Of course, you'll be doing this with two hands. So you'll bend it up with one, and then you grab your pigtail, twist it on there real quick, and then you can kind of have that sitting there, flush it. So what I'll usually do once I do that is I'll draw back. I'll just grab a little 10cc syringe. And I'll draw back a little bit, see if I get a, a good blood drawback, and then I'll flush it. And as you're flushing, make sure you're not getting any um, any sort of infiltration or anything. Make sure it's not bubbling up, um, and I'll kind of feel uh, distal to the actual hub, and see if I, I feel any sort of um, if I feel the the actual you know saline that I'm in, inserting through there go in and not actually bubble up under the skin or anything. So once you've done that, you'll connect that uh, pigtail, that J-loop, and then you can tape it, secure it, um, and you have your IV in there, and that's it. And then this will be garbage, of course. Toss this away, and you're set. You have a good IV, you have it in there, and you're set to give your meds or, or your fluids or, or draw your blood or anything. All right? So that is um, just basics about an IV. We can go into it more a little bit later, but that are some of the basics and some of the things that you can do to make sure you get a good IV. All righty, have a good day. Want a free 20 page sample of the ebook 140 Must Know NCLEX Meds? Visit medoftheday.com to download your free PDF sample today. That's medoftheday.com.